Okay, so there are a lot of bad purchases that I've made over the last 10 years of making a living off of photo and video. And these are the top five least useful purchases I have made. First, I wanna say thank you to Cam Mackey for letting me shoot in his studio. Look at this beautiful backdrop. Appreciate it, man. I'm gonna just start by holding the X100V. Yeah, I'm not gonna mention it, I'm just gonna. Right before we jump in, I just wanna say everybody's different, so you possibly might find these useful. Let me know if you do, but they're not useful to me. Okay, number one is high-end audio. And now I think this might be a little bit controversial because people always tell you to focus on audio first. And I think that they're right. What I'm talking about is audio that's designed for a small crew that's maybe shooting a short film or something like that. That was just your M11, it's fine. What, what was it? Just your M11, it's fine. You don't like that one, right? We're talking about like dedicated audio recorders, shotgun mics, and like boom poles. This is stuff that would go to a person that their whole job is gonna be recording audio. Now, I bought these things thinking I would be recording short films all the time, but turns out I make YouTube videos and take pictures primarily. So I've used these maybe once. And even in the situations where I do make short films, I use more convenient solutions like wireless lav mics and just sound design and post. Shoulder rigs. These always look really cool for people who actually need them. And like everything else in this list, it can be used and it is necessary for certain jobs. And because I see people who actually use it look really cool, when I first started, I bought one. I can't even seem to get it out of my head that I might need it one day, that's why I still have it. But in the nine plus years of shooting, I have used it exactly one time. I didn't need it. I definitely forced it to be a part of the shoot and it did not turn out well. So I've talked about how I actually rig out my cameras in this video here. And a solution like this is much simpler, sometimes a lot cheaper, and works for a much wider variety of scenarios. Next up is diffusion filters. And unless you need a consistent diffusion from one shoot to another, or you need some secondary effect that a specific filter gives you, I think a little bit of forehead grease does just as good as a diffusion filter, if not better. Now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, that's a terrible idea, and you're kind of right. I don't put anything on a lens directly. Normally I have an ND filter or just a clear UV filter that will protect my lens. Also, you can dial that in on the spot. You can clean some of it off and you can also clear the center of the filter and have just some edge diffusion if you want. Also, if you're shooting in cold environments or you're just not a greasy person like me, uh, I guess you're shit out of luck and you gotta spend 95 bucks on a diffusion filter. And most of the time when people talk about diffusion filters, they're really good for certain scenarios like darker environments with like window lighting and stuff like that. But if you're shooting in broad daylight, it it just adds that full layer of lower contrast and then you're gonna have to fix it in post. There's a lot of issues with it and you just probably won't end up using it as much as you think you will. Okay, next up is macro lenses. And this one sucks because I end up buying these because I really like hyper close up detail shots. I think they look incredible. It's just the issue is when you have to stop the whole shoot to switch lenses, refocus in, get an entirely new shot of the same thing, it slows your momentum down. What I end up doing to fix this problem and still get close-up shots is look for lenses with naturally really good close focus. Personally, for my FX30 rig, I use the contemporary zooms from Sigma and they have a naturally extremely close focus. It's, a, it's not fully macro, but you end up getting plenty close for most shots and it's not gonna slow you down. You're gonna be able to continue on with the rest of the shoot. Last up is action cameras. And this one, I think this one gets like everybody. For me, what happened was I saw all the really cool POV shots from Breaking Bad and I thought, oh, I'm gonna do that. I'll strap my camera to whatever. It'll be like a cool cinematic shot. But just like the regular marketing for any action camera where they're gonna trick somebody into thinking they're gonna film a super cool vacation, cliff jumping or mountain biking, you just, you're not gonna do that that often. You'll end up using it like one or two times when the opportunity actually presents itself. And then it's just gonna sit in a drawer until you get to the point where it's outdated and you've gotta buy a new one if you wanna do another shot like that. I think it's a lot more effective to rig out your main camera and figure out a way to mount that in those scenarios. Of course, action cameras have their place in being a little bit more rugged or waterproof. And in those scenarios, of course, that's probably the best way to go. But like I said, I find myself not using them enough and then reselling them at a loss at a later date 
and this has happened to me like three or four times. For instance, these are Cam's action cameras. There's a, a whole pile of them. Uh, Cam, how many action cameras have you used and then forgotten about and ended up not using? Just GoPro. Just, he's just forgotten about the GoPro. So before I was creating content, I, I didn't use them too much. Uh, I put them on a couple of cowboys and that was really it. But as a content creator, I started using these more for BTS. So if you're not shooting BTS, then I guess this is an invalid point. <laughs> also, I think it's a really good point to think about, can you do this with an iPhone? If the answer is yes, I can, uh, don't buy an action camera. I have like a little stupid necklace thing. I'll link it in the description. It holds your iPhone like right here. That thing works far better than most action camera setups that I've tried before. And I didn't need to buy a new camera. All right, now guys, I know I said there are five items, but I've got a bonus one and it is very sad. It's the X100V. I have found myself just, just not even picking it up. And when I do, I kind of regret it and I wish I would have grabbed my Nikon ZF because it's not that much bigger and I prefer how it functions and looks so much more than this camera. It's a little bit of a sad one, but yeah, I think I'm gonna get rid of this. It's just collecting dust at this point. I did recently get it upgraded to a Leica X100V, but that still hasn't improved the image quality too much, at least that I've seen. What I think this all comes down to and is really important to think about when you're purchasing gear, don't purchase in an aspirational manner. Most of these items I purchased because I wanted to be making short films where I have a small crew. I wanted to use a shoulder mount. I wanted an action camera because I wanted to be doing these cool things, but I had no plans to, so they ended up not being used. If you are thinking about some equipment that you would like to be able to use but aren't using it in the moment, I would hold off and wait till you need to buy it. So that's it, I think just when you're purchasing equipment, try not to be aspirational and wait till you actually need it. That way it's gonna be used a lot more and it's gonna last a lot longer and not collect dust. Okay, that's it. Uh, bye forever and on your way out, please do subscribe.